29.4, A Closer Look at Leaves. We have two types of plants. We have a dicot and a monocot. Now a dicot leaf is what we are, we are familiar with. We have our stem, our node, our axillary bud, our petiole, and our leaf. Now leaf is commonly referred to as a blade. In the monocot uh, leaf structure, you'll notice that there is no petiole or node, and the blade often envelopes or wraps around the stem in what's called a sheath. Now types of leaves. We have simple leaves, which is just one, one leaf with veins running through it, which the veins are the vascular tissue. Uh, the leaf is called a blade. And then we have the petiole where it would be attached to the stem. Um, this would be a common simple leaf. Number one would be the petiole. Number two would be the axillary bud. Now the next type of leaf, we have compound leaves. So we see the simple leaf here where we have uh, one blade with the petiole axillary bud attached to the stem here at the node. Now in a compound leaf, the blade is consisting of leaflets. So this whole section would be considered the blade made up of leaflets. And then we have our petiole with our axillary bud. You'll notice that these are not individual leaves or blades because they do not have axillary buds. This is called a compound leaf. Um, so the petiole is there. We have the axillary bud. Now the question marks would be the leaflets. We have a doubly compound leaf, which is this, where each leaflet is made of its own leaflets. Again, this whole region here is still referred to as the blade. Um, uh, you'll notice common... Uh, common structures between the three types. They all have one petiole with an axillary bud. Here's our compound leaf and then our simple leaf. Again, you'll see the three types, simple, compound, doubly compound. Now some benefits to being doubly compound or compound is that you have a higher wind resistance. The wind can flow through your leaves a lot easier. Um, also, if you think about in terms of fungus or parasites or pathogens attacking a plant, um, if it attacks just one little tiny leaflet of the blade, well, hopefully um, that leaflet can fall off and die and the disease will not spread through the entire plant, whereas opposed to a simple leaf where if a, a pathogen of some sort attacks it, it has the potential to spread through the entire leaf and ultimately the entire plant. Oh, there's a real doubly compound plant. Uh, we have some modified leaves. We have tendrils, which are going to help in vines uh, reaching out and uh, increasing in primary growth. We have spines. Spines uh, you find like on cacti. Now these have evolved because uh, maybe cacti grow in hot temperatures. So by a leaf being a spine, it's going to reduce um, the surface area, which will reduce the amount of water lost through transpiration. It's also... Um, could have evolved for predators, right? <laughs> predators not going to want to eat spikes. Um, we have storage leaves. This is a common ice plant you might see on the side of a freeway, going to store water. Then we have reproductive leaves. These leaves on little leaflets on the outside of the plant uh, can drop off of the plant and grow into new ones. And then we have bracts. This is a poinsettia you see around the holidays. These red things are not petals like on a flower. However, these are leaves that are red to attract pollinators. Now leaf structure, a leaf consists of the three tissues. We have the dermal tissue, the epidermis in blue. The cuticle would be here in um, like a yellowish color on the surface, the waxy cuticle. Then we have the dermal, I'm sorry, that's the dermal tissue. We have the ground tissue, which is made up of the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll. This is where photosynthesis is going to occur. You can see there's a lot of space in between the mesophyll, and that's for um, carbon dioxide and oxygen. Uh, carbon dioxide is going to diffuse into the plant leaf through an opening called stomata, and the oxygen can diffuse out also through the stomata. And then we also have our vascular tissue, which would be the xylem and the phloem. Now, maybe the reason the, not maybe, but the reason the, vascular tissue is in the leaf is because we know photosynthesis requires water so the xylem can transport water to the leaf and then phloem can be there to 
uh, maybe remove some of the, the sugar that's made during photosynthesis and transport it to where the plant needs, which we'll discuss in another section. And then we have leaf veins. Leaf veins that you see on plants are the vascular tissues, um, the xylem and the phloem running through the plant.